And I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, Jean-Paul Laborde, uh, Assistant Secretary General and Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate. And uh, of course, this is a time when uh, the UN system has been moving forward in the last weeks on, on the issues of counterterrorism. So I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, having hosted us uh, today. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate the new uh, uh, UN counterterrorist coordinator, Ambassador Vladimir Ivanovich Voronkov, uh, who will take soon his, his position. And uh, I can assure already today that uh, we will do at, uh, our utmost in the Security Council with uh, our analysis and, um, yeah, no, okay. and uh, assessment tools to help and to assist him in the coordination uh, as uh, uh, it should be and uh, uh, finally to deliver whatever has to be delivered as one UN against terrorism, which is a global threat. And uh, of course, uh, this global threat has to get uh, uh, m much more attention, even the attention was there, but even more, more attention due to the uh, recent attacks everywhere in the world. Um, I wish to brief you today uh, both because uh, it has been a while uh, since uh, I last did so, and because the Counterterrorist Committee later this afternoon will hold uh, a special meeting on how we can enhance international cooperation against terrorism, especially in the fields of international judicial and law enforcement uh, collaboration. The meeting this afternoon marks the, the first special uh, meeting dedicated to this uh, theme by the Counterterrorist Committee since the Security Council unanimously adopted Resolution 2322 last December on enhancing international judicial and law enforcement cooperation in order to strengthen the international response to terrorism. For your information, the briefing this afternoon is open uh, also to uh, the UN accredited journalists. That's uh, something that uh, I have to tell you. And it starts at 3 o'clock, uh, conference room 3, and will also be webcast. Um, before going into details uh, uh, on the uh, international cooperation against terrorism and uh, the subject matter of the meeting of this afternoon. Allow me uh, before to provide you with uh, uh, an update on Daesh ISIL because there are significant developments on this front. Compared to uh, two uh, years, uh, two and a half years ago, Daesh now controls an area approximately half uh, of what the, ter the terrorist organization did in uh, January uh, 2015 the half of it. The number of ISIL uh, fighters is estimated to be between 12,000 and 20,000, but some other sources say that there are only 7,000. So I made, the, the, made this balance around 12,000, which is something that, uh, uh, according to the, all the sources, should be, uh, should be correct. Daesh is also at a critical moment in terms of uh, its financial situation. The group has suffered a reversal of fortune over the last 16 months, and most of the group's uh, funding comes from taxes now and coercive extraction from agriculture and or commercial activity. Estimates of revenue streams are uh, always challenging, uh, but we know that uh, income from oil and gas, which has been a mainstay of IC funding, is strongly reduced, and this is among other factors due to the effective and sustained effort from the air and uh, uh, on the ground. According to some estimates, ISIL's net profit annually is down to 13 million US dollars. And increasingly, Daesh Core has started urging its affiliate to be more self-sufficient and proactive in developing their, interna in their internal revenue stream streams. In addition, Daesh has also drawn income from antiquities, uh, antiquities smuggling, uh, sale of electricity, exploitation of mineral resources, external donations, 
kidnapping for ransom and human trafficking. So you see the side now of uh, uh, what we call organized crime linked to uh, ISIL more and more. And the U.S. and um, finally the U.N. Office of uh, the SRG on Sexual Violence in Conflict has documented instances of uh, the selling, gifting, and trading of women and children among fighters, which is also another source of re revenue and income for uh, ISIL Daesh. Despite uh, its numerous setbacks, Daesh continues to demonstrate its capacity to adapt, and this is a problem that we have to face now, in particular by shifting its focus away from the conflict zones of the Middle East to enable or inspire attacks against soft targets in other countries. Recently, we have seen a number of terrorist attacks across, uh, across several locations. And I, I don't want to cite them because otherwise I will privilege one against the other one. So it means that, uh, unfortunately, it's all over the world. There have been also many, uh, uh, but, less down, but less known examples of foiled terrorist attacks since the adoption of uh, Security Council Resolution uh, 2178 from September uh, 2014 on stemming the flow of foreign terrorist fighters, abbreviated uh, FTF. In light of this shift in the way ISIL uh, uh, generates and use funds, the international community will need to adapt. Even if Daesh uh, no longer controls territory, it is ex control any territory even, it is expected that the group will continue to use extortion and criminal activity as a funding tactic, and member states have indicated that ISIL is likely to depend more on kidnapping from ransom, especially as journalists and aid workers return to liberated regions. That's also something that you have to uh, understand. In addition, ISIL may increase its reliance on external donations to secure further funding. More important, ISIL has planned for the day after with investments within the conflict zone as well as the wider region which can serve as a source of funding or other sources drying up. And the access of the foreign terrorist fighters to their home bank accounts even after they have traveled to the conflict zone, remains a problem with fighters or facilitators withdrawing funds using ATMs near the conflict zone, but also uh, um, having families or friends uh, back home as proxies who uh, could get their money from their account and then send the money through informal channels. Although the use of uh, bitcoins to, by ISIL operatives uh, is not yet wet, widespread, a few cases of ISIL supporters using this payment system have been reported. And in terms of foreign terrorist fighters traveling back to their uh, countries of origin or residence, it is estimated that around 40 to 50 percent uh, of all, for example, the European uh, uh, foreign terrorist fighters have returned, but it's not only the Europeans, there are also people coming from the other countries and uh, other parts of the world. And this poses a host of challenges for many countries in the world. And the current wave of returnees, the one of now, is likely to be even more dangerous than the previous one. Many of the FTF within the current wave of returnees I've been, I've been really fighting for years, and they are probably the most dangerous fighters uh, and the most skilled, skilled fighters that will return now. So it means that we have to really look into the matter of border control, uh, uh, control of the passports, etc. And in order to prevent their uh, foreign terrorist fighters uh, from returning home, at least 25 countries in the world have enacted legislation enabling authorities to withdraw the citizenship or invalidate the travel document of persons involved in terrorism. But such measures, we have also to understand that, may prove counterproductive to long-term global countries' efforts at, as they tend to simply shift the problem to another country and will delay finding of sustainable solutions. This is why the meeting of these two days is so important to really uh, make the countries understand that international cooperation is, uh, is the key uh, to respond to this uh, threat, to this new 
type of threat uh, of the returnees of uh, the funding, etc. And states uh, must, um, must further strengthen their cooperation to prevent terrorists from finding safe havens and from operating anywhere with impunity. Through the unanimous adoption by the Security Council of its resolution 2322 last December, which we'll, uh, we'll discuss in this special meeting this afternoon, the Council called upon states to put in place a number of tools for improving their international and judicial cooperation. And this includes, for example, sharing evidence, uh, conducting joint investigations, and strengthening mutual uh, legal agreements. One point I want to, sh to share with you is that, for example, yesterday in the technical uh, sessions uh, on biometric, uh, biometrics, sorry, ICAO shared the advantages of establishing one single database for passports. That's something that's very important. And using ICAO for this purpose, member states have one point of contact for biometrics instead of over 36,000 bilateral agreements. So that's, that's really something which has to be underlined. And finally, the Council also encouraged uh, states to consider extending access to and where appropriate integrate into their national systems Interpol 24-7 police information network beyond the National uh, Central Bureau. Uh, you have to know that, for example, Interpol databases on the foreign terrorist fighters has information on, on almost 15,000 individuals. And uh, the, the, the total of the information uh, that Interpol has at its disposal uh, is six, uh, 68 million records provided by 174 countries. So this is why we need this cooperation, and this is why I think that uh, there is no doubt that the list of concrete actions in this area of international and judicial cooperation is a key. Not only we had this meeting, we have this meeting this afternoon, but we had also sessions yesterday and this morning uh, among the practitioners to start this exchange and to see how much we can use the uh, Security Council resolutions, not only uh, from the point of view on, uh, of an obligation for member states, but also the, as a tool for cooperation for member states. Thank you very much. I will uh, now uh, stop here, and I'm happy to take any question that you, have, you, know, that you may have. Thanks. And if you can all please speak into the microphone and identify yourselves to our, our speaker. Yes, Abdul Hamid. Uh, thank you, Monsieur Laborde. My name is Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi. Thank you. I have two questions. First, about the perception of uh, terrorism. Once it is mentioned, automatically it, it is like describing Muslims. How can you do some re education of the public that to make sure that the word terrorism does not mean ethnicity or any religion or any Terrorist is a terrorist as an individual, but not the religion he or she belongs to. The second, there is a, um, attempts, especially by some uh, countries, to mix between terrorism and the rights of the people to resist occupation and foreign domination. It's spilled out in the UN Charter and in many resolutions that the peoples under occupation have the right to resist occupation. I could refer you to many resolutions, including 3236 and operative paragraph number five. That is the right of the people to resist occupation. However, nowadays, there are some countries, first and foremost Israel, to, make, to mix between the right of the people to resist and to, to label it as terrorism. Everything is terrorism. How can you make the distinction between the right of the people to resist occupation and international terrorism? Thank you. Can I answer the question, or I take another one? Um, I can answer the question. question. Um, yes, and I think that for the first one, for the first question, there is no doubt now that uh, uh, there is no there is no connection between uh, between uh, uh, this religion that you mentioned, uh, the Muslim religion, and uh, and terrorism. That's quite clear that these people do not bring any, any uh, value of uh, uh, the Muslim religion in this, uh, in this context. And uh, in, um, in all, the, we have to refer to the uh, uh, 
uh, to the international instruments against terrorism. No mention of the religion. And uh, you know what is an act of terrorism according to, and it, it, res it responds also to the second question by, uh, in this case. An act of terrorism, I mean, terrorism is an act of terrorism according to the UN, which is listed in the, uh, in the conventions with a specific intent, which is to coerce a government to do something or not to do something, or to intimidate the general population. But it has to be linked to the offenses which has been which has to be which has been committed means, for example, murder, etc. and each of these uh, each of these acts are not at all linked to any type of uh, uh, I mean uh, resistance, etc. This is where you have to make the distinction. We have to be really very legalistic on this uh, on this issue, and that's 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 the answer that we should uh, we should have. Sure. Um. Well, first of all, I'll just follow up on that question and my main question. Uh, would you concede, however, that the, um, at least an interpretation of uh, uh, jihadist ideology uh, that's rooted at least in an interpretation uh, of the Koran and so forth uh, has helped fuel, uh, at least by the omission of the terrorists themselves, many of the terrorist acts we're seeing, including the one yesterday, the attempted one in Brussels. So that, that's my first question. Uh, my other question is, uh, you mentioned about uh, integrating um, a, into a, a, it sounded like a centralized database. Uh, Sorry, excuse me? It sounded like you were talking uh, in your uh, remarks Interpol about, database, yes. Yeah, Interpol, and you were also talking about, um, you know, other other information in terms of, of, of passport information, biometric, and so forth. Uh, it sounded like you were talking about a centralized, uh, uh, integrated system accessible by many countries. Uh, are precautions going to be taken to uh, ensure against hacking uh, by terrorists uh, to get access to that information, to manipulate it, uh, and exploit it? Um, so if you could speak to that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, okay. On the first one, I want to refer one minute to the history of my country. In the 16th and 17th century, centuries, sorry, we had this fight, this terrible civil war between Protestants and Catholics, and each of them were saying that they were interpreting well what God was saying. And we have so many examples in the, in, the, in the world. But for us, it was really devastating. And this is, they, there is a connection with the history of this country, by the way, because they created the, the Protestants who escaped, they created New Rochelle. Right? La Rochelle and New Rochelle. So I don't think that we, you can base any uh, true uh, fight or whatever, you know, uh, saying that uh, you are, I mean, based your fight on, on a religion in a, in a real interpretation of this religion. I don't think so. And we have so many examples in, in the... You know, so you can, take the, you can take the example of the Muslim religion. Okay, you take this example here, there, etc. Okay, that's... Probably you have to, ma to make an analysis which is much more, let's say, deeper. Where it comes from, uh, perhaps also... Uh, the economic, uh, the um, I mean, the history of these countries, uh, what, what is what is uh, what is coming uh, now. Also, we have to distinguish what uh, we call the, and this is something that we have done, um, counter narrative, and and uh, and this type of um, this type of uh, uh, claim uh, about uh, the Muslim religion by the jihad. We had uh, the res uh, final, I mean, uh, these days, uh, some days ago, we had a resolution 2354 uh, on the counter narrative because we have to really make sure that this counter narrative is well propagated at the worldwide level and really say, no way, it cannot be like that. You have to educate, you have to use uh, the, the services of uh, UNESCO, which, which is very involved in that. Uh, to have this dialogue among the religions. We have also to uh, go into 
uh, all the issues related to development. Uh, so there are many, many means. Probably we should not even singularize one. It is really something that it is needed at the global level. So it means that jihadism, whatever they do and take whatever part of the Quran they want, is not linked, in my view. It's an advantage they, they, they take for whatever, and that's it. Hacking. Whatever you have said, well, uh, I, we had a very important meeting of the Counter Trace Committee a few days ago, in which we had a very interesting uh, uh, presentation from Interpol, because I refer to the Interpol database, and they really said that uh, they are really well protected against the, the hacking. Second, the countries which want to, to share the uh, information, it's on willingness. You, will, you, you want to do this or you don't want to do this? The protection is key, and you are right to, to say that protection is in, uh, extremely important, because we need this cooperation. There is no way we need it. Uh, if you have somebody who leaves the country to go, because they, what they do is uh, broken, tra broken travels. If you have somebody who leaves the country to go to another one, etc., you have to know. Because before, before the person you know, uh, is in the plane, you have to know that this person is really uh, a danger for the other passengers. If you have not this information, you cannot do that. And, uh, and the, many of the flights are... Unfortunately, the majority, I mean, not the majority, many of the flights are international. So if you don't know who is getting into the plane, that's a problem for us, for all of us. Okay. Uh, Sylvia? Uh, merci, Monsieur Laborde. Je suis Sylviane Zéhil de Lorient Le Jour. Ma question va être en français ou en anglais, je ne sais pas. Vous pouvez me répondre en français uh, my question is going to be in English, but please, if you want, you can answer in, in French. Uh, I'll, my, um, it's about Daesh. You only mentioned Daesh. What about the other terrorist organization? And if, are you satisfied by the fact that they are, they have less finance, less finance, uh, they are less stronger because they have no finance, they are not uh, financed well, they n'ont pas assez de financement. And also, um, are, are, they, are they a danger for Europe? Because they are well, more than... The other organizations or this no, one? No, <coughs> Daesh. Okay. Est-ce est que Daesh est un, est un, uh, maintenant, uh, représente un danger pour l'Europe? Le fait qu'ils se sont yes. éparpillés. Uh, yes, of course, it's a danger for Europe, it's a danger for everywhere, because if they can be éparpillés, as you said, in the, in the spread out in, in many countries in, in the world. Uh, no, I wanted to mention Daesh uh, more specifically because uh, there is a significant change. At the moment, for example, the other organization which is very strong, I mean, which was very strong, was Boko Haram. Boko Haram has really been uh, tackled already. I, I mentioned that during uh, another briefing, especially a briefing in uh, uh, in Brussels also, um, but uh, at the moment what is significant is uh, on, on one side the reduction of the resources and the uh, so-called uh, fighting capacities of, uh, of Daesh, but in the same time also I, it is my duty as the head of the Counter-Terrorism Executive Directorate, which is the independent body for the assessment and uh, the analysis to tell you that uh, this reduction at the moment also uh, provokes a kind of spread of uh, all these fighters which are going back to their, to their country. Of course, as I said, uh, between 40 and 50 percent are back already, but that was uh, less dangerous. Now the danger uh, is still coming from uh, the people who are still there and who would like to, and would like, I mean, not even that, who will be forced to leave these, these places and go back, go back or go somewhere else eh, to other places in which these people are well trained can really create a danger for uh, many, uh, uh, many countries. And this is why we have this meeting on international cooperation because in order to manage you know, the movements of these people, you need to have international cooperation. You cannot do that alone. That's what I, I wanted to say. Thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Matthew, uh, I know you. Nice to see you. I wanted nice to ask you about, uh, um, you know, you were saying efforts that countries make not to have 
former or ISIS fighters returned to their country. There was a long article in the Wall Street Journal at the end of May yeah. about French uh, special forces advising Iraq how to essentially execute French nationals that have joined ISIS and making sure that they never return in that way. And I wanted to know, it seemed like, I mean, it's a very detailed, it had a lot of sources. Is, it, is that in fact taking place? Is that something that the UN, when you saw that article, are you concerned about that approach by European countries trying to <coughs> not only, you know, travel documents. I mean, it's, it's one thing, to, I guess, to kill them in the middle of a battle, but this sounded like a targeted attempt to kill them so they don't return. And my other question was about this. Just today they passed the resolution on G5 Sahel and very much couching it, I mean, very much presenting it as a fight against terrorism. So what, what can you say about the, the actual target of that force and, and comparing it as a, as a danger to, to, the th to mostly ISIS, which you've been discussing here? No, what I, what I want to say about that, I mean, uh, is that we have to prove, in order to be more efficient, we have to prove that international cooperation can work. This is what I want to say. And I will not depart from that, that place. I mean, you can have information here, there, etc. But what I have to do is to really underline that if you want to, um, I mean, do the the the, 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 I mean, the work against and, and the international organizations in the way that you the UN uh, is meant for. You have to increase international cooperation in criminal matters. This is what I want to say. That's where we need to make uh, uh, an effort. At the very moment, let me tell you frankly that uh, the international cooperation is not sufficient. International cooperation, in a way I conceive that, is not sufficient. You have many countries of the world, just an example, mm -hmm. who have ratified, which have ratified many conventions, many, many protocols, and, uh, and nothing in the legislation reflected about this convention and protocol. How you can have international cooperation in this case? So in this case, you go other ways. But this is where we have to say, hey, we have to go through international cooperation. We have the uh, resolution of the Council. We have to uh, strengthen that. And my... My point is that during these two days, uh, I mean, technical meetings uh, yesterday and this morning, I am very encouraged by the fact that uh, many of the uh, representatives of not only international organizations but also member states are, are really willing to do that. And that this is something that we have to push because if we want to have a, to put it, uh, an end one day, not today, of course, but one day to the international terrorism, we have to strengthen these methods and mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Can I, just, I just wanted to ask us specifically about, I mean, it's a, a, first of all, did you see the article, do you know the article that I'm referring to? Article or not article, I will do the same answer. Because right. that's, that my point is that I want to go into that direction, and this is why I am not a judge in, sure. in this position. You know what I mean? I am a judge in my country, not here. <laughs> so this is, this is what I have to say. I, I want to say this is the job of the UN is to promote that one. That's what I want to say. Majid? Thank you, Farhana, and thank you, Mr. Lovert, for this uh, press briefing. I want to ask two questions. The first one is related to that definition of terrorism. Um, the, the new um, General Assembly approved uh, counterterrorism office is based on the global uh, counterterrorism strategy of 2006, which is, I believe you would agree, it's fairly broad and it doesn't define who's, ter who's terrorist and who's not. I just want to understand, um, is that office uh, will focus on countering terrorism um, as defined by Security Council resolutions who are terrorists in the list, or the definition going to be broader? Because, as you know, the, uh, the list of Security Council is way more limited of the terrorist group than certain member states who consider which group is terrorist and which is not. And, um, and the, the, the second question I want to ask is, um, you you spoke about what's going on on the ground in Iraq and Syria, and ISIS almost losing control of most of what they were controlling in Iraq. What does the next phase of, of uh, ISIS operation look like? Um, there are talks about that they are moving to their operation to cities, having more attacks throughout Europe and other major capitals where we are seeing. Can you get, tell us, give us more idea about this? Thank you. Okay. 
concerning the definition of uh, terrorism, the office, the strategy, and the Security Council resolution, I've, I, actually you have four issues in your first question. Definition of terrorism at the moment in the UN is what? Is terrorism, yes, I know what is terrorism for the UN. Is terrorist is the act of terrorism as defined in the conventions. You understand me? You have 19 instruments which define specifically the acts of terrorism. Mm. So these constitute the body, the corpus juris, we let's say, of what the acts of terrorism are. The list is something different. You list in a, in a, in a, in a manner which is a preventive manner, preventative manner, means that you list the person and, and the organizations and you don't allow them to transfer funds to, uh, or to travel from one country to the other for the people who are part of these organizations. That's it. That, now, you say all the organizations are not listed. Yes, but it, still each of the individuals, of the individuals who are part of the organizations can commit the acts of terrorism as defined in, in the convention that we have completely forgotten very often. And this is not true. This is not good. We have to insist on the fact that if you want to have a, a good uh, uh, international uh, system, you have to have uh, this these acts of terrorism as defined in the Convention as the basis of our actions, which, by the way, cover all the acts of terrorism. And, and I want to refer also to, the, for, and as an example, I used to be the head of the Secretariat for the uh, uh, negotiations of the Transnational Organized Crime Convention. You have no definition of transnational organized crime. You have the acts, you have the transnationality, and then you have the phenomenon of the transnational organized crime. It's the same for terrorism. So that's, that's the point. Uh, finally, uh, the next step. I, I describe that not only for Europe, but I, I think that this is, you know, it is too, too much uh, Europe-centric, I would like to say, what we, what we speak about. So it means that all the countries in the world, I mentioned some countries of, in Asia, but of course also the countries of the Middle East or the countries of the Gulf can be the victims of, of these uh, of, of returnees. And they are, I just have in your mind, some countries of even of the Gulf in which uh, they have some returnees and which have been under threat of uh, terrorist acts. So the next step is really that ISIS, re I would like to say, comes back to a, a more traditional way of uh, acts of the way of uh, uh, committing acts of terrorism underground. That's what is not the fight f uh, confronting. So confronting the uh, whatever type of uh, whatever type of uh, forces, but it will be a fight as it, it was in the past, uh, especially in, uh, as it is now, like in uh, uh, many places uh, in which you have these terrorist attacks. But, uh, on my first question, Mr. Lavar, I don't believe you. Uh, I um, was clear about my question. Uh, I, I wanted to understand there. Are, I'm sure you know that, for example, Russia, United States, and other members have different definition on who's terrorist and who's not. No. In this body, in this counterterrorism, they, they do actually. The Russia consider most of the um, parts of the opposition groups in, in Syria terrorists. The United States doesn't. Who decides who's a terrorist in this This is what I tell office? you, and I come back to that. At the, in the UN, there is only one line of command, meets the international... Uh, instruments. That's what the UN recognizes. The countries are sovereign. They do whatever they want. Mm. But as, lo as far as the UN, as long as the UN and as, and as far as the UN is, is concerned, you know, this is what we have. And I will always have the same re response, which corresponds also to the rule of law and, and the, what, the international body of rule of law. We have these conventions against terrorism. Say, who has committed an act of terrorism? This one. Terrorist by explosive, financial... It, is, it has been decided already. The conventions are here for you, and they are available. So if you want to have a, a, a reference, a criteria at the international level, it should be these bodies. Very okay. nice. <clears throat> Thank you, Farnas Fassi from the Wall Street Journal. I wanted to ask a little from bit about the Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal. Um, ask you about um, the new counterterrorism office and uh, if you have any de operational details of, of the structure and how it would work and how your office will cooperate and work with them. 
Um, and what do you think that, it, that they can do that you haven't been able to tackle in terms of um, international terrorism? Thank you very much for this question, ma'am. Um, we at the Security Council, we have a very, let's say, uh, we have a very uh, clear mandate, independent assessment of the counter risk capacities of member states and analysis also of this counter risk capacity, also a projection of the trends in terms of uh, uh, what we can expect in, in terms of uh, the future of terrorist organization. This is what I did today. That's our, but it is really one part of the job. You have also the 1267 committee, which is in charge of listing. Uh, we have uh, also 1540 for the weapons of mass destruction, only for the Security Council. Um, in, the, in the framework of uh, uh, the UN, you have so many organizations which uh, work on countries. For example, of course, CTITF, which will be now under uh, the authority of the uh, new coordinator. CTITF is the coordinating body which, uh, of course, uh, take whenever it is necessary our uh, takes our um, conclusions on technical assistance, for example, to bring the ten terrorist, uh, counter terrorist capacity of member states upper. And, uh, and also the UNCCT, which has some funds to inject and to on the ground implement that. But the other one is the uh, UNODC. UNODC has a large role to play, uh, and uh, especially with the connection with uh, organized crime, but also with the terrorist prevention branch. And that. So that it needs a figure. First of all, the new coordinator will be the figure of counter-terrorism in, the, in this uh, organization. So he will have this role. Second, he will not, of course, he will give coherence to these actions of, of this uh, General Assembly and the Security Council, uh, and respecting, of course, the mandate of each of them, but still, you know, to give some coherence, to, uh, to give coherence, not some, to give coherence to that, and uh, you are uh, not mentioning even Interpol, which is not UN, but it is part of, uh, of, of, this, uh, of, this, of the task force. You have WC, the, the World Custom Organization, the uh, International Maritime Organization, International Organization of Migration, etc. So you need this figure, and you need somebody full-time who is in charge of that. That's where the benefit is about. Oh, Olga? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laborde. My name is Olga Denisova with uh, RIA Novosti, Russian News Agency. You started... Uh, <laughs> you started by mentioning the a new counterterrorism uh, body and its new uh, heads. Uh, do you have an understanding how long will the transitional uh, period um, take and uh, when the new office will be operational? So it depends. Of course, uh, I understand that the question followed the question which was posed to you. Yes. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I think that in the in the in the strategy of the of, of the UN, especially of the Secretary General, I think that he wants to have this office uh, running as soon as possible. That's uh, after that, it's a question of uh, adjusting when uh, Ambassador Vorongov will leave uh, Vienna and come here, but. It should be quickly done because we need it anyway. We need this uh, this body in place uh, as soon as possible. Uh, yeah, Dad? Yes. But uh, so just just a very quick follow-up. But still, uh, just do you understand the transition the transitional period from the existing counterterrorism structures under under the new department? How long should it take? Will it? Take no, no. But uh, you will transfer this. Uh, excuse me. I I, I you know, probably pick up what you want to to say that. CTITF UN, UN, UNCCT will be transferred under his uh, leadership as soon as he arrives. That, that's, that's finished, uh, and then the, the things will be done right away. Mm. Yeah, yes, yes uh, Dov Levy from the Jewish Press. Uh, my question is, you spoke of defining terrorism. Obviously, this entire uh, uh, briefing is about that. Uh, you said not to allow uh, uh, agencies or states to... Uh, uh, transfer funds or, or allow people uh, to travel? Is that, is no, that no. correct? No, uh, no. What I said, there are several, uh, several, um, several means, okay? These means are, first of all, you, uh, not to allow to transfer funds. You have to 
types of, uh, of instruments. First of all, you have the uh, uh, UN Convention Against the Financing of Terrorism, 1999. Uh, 1999. So this one is <clears throat> a, board, uh, a tool which is for member states to, to use. And uh, uh, in terms of bilateral, multilateral cooperation, you can do that. The other one is 1267. This is what I, I was referring to, the 1267 Committee, which has listed a series of organizations. And for these organizations only, this is true, uh, you, have the, you have the capacity to list or delist these organizations under the Security Council mandate. Third, you have also the capacity at the national level to use 1373 resolution, which is a list, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, established by each of the member states under 1373, which lists its own organizations. Monsieur, je vois qu'il est impatient. Hein? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a, a second time for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Following up with the issue of definition, you know the UN has not reached one verified, agreed upon, unanimously adopted definition of terrorism. US uh, enforcement agencies had at least 100 definitions. That's US alone. Two things among the divergence, among the points of dispute. One is homegrown terrorists, and second, state-sponsored terrorism. These are among the issues that dividing member states of reaching one single unified agreed upon definition. Is your office concerned with these two issues? Why when there is an act of terrorism committed by a foreigner or foreign religion or a minority religion, then it classified automatically as terrorism. But if similar act committed by a local, then it's called crime or mentally deranged, or f they find a different ways of getting out that act of being defined as a terrorist act. That's one. And second, state-sponsored terrorism. Why this is not included in the activities of the UN? To be because what makes a difference between killing innocent through um, a suicide bomber or dropping 2,000 bombs on a residential area killing the same number of innocent people? Thank you. I think that uh, the, for the second question, you should refer to the, uh, not to terrorism, you should refer to international humanitarian law. That's, that's where the states are under. This is not, this is not, this is the response to why is, you have it here. The second, the second, I mean, the first uh, question is that uh, when we speak about terrorism here, we speak about international terrorism, okay? It means that uh, when there is a terrorist an international dimension in the implication of the terrorist act. For that, as you said, we have not, uh, uh, I don't understand by the way what means, uh, uh, and, uh, because I am a lawyer, I am a judge, I am a criminal judge, I don't understand the issue of uh, one agreed upon definition. This for me, we have all the acts, and in addition to that, if you want to really to respect human rights and rule of law, which is in this room probably that everybody wants to do, you need to have the definition of the acts of terrorism. Not terrorists per se, but the acts of terrorism. And the acts of terrorism, they are defined. Because when I, I fulfill my functions and, uh, of a judge, I have to judge if there is a legal element, if there is a, 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 a factual element, an intentional element. That's what we have to have. In these acts of terrorism that we have defined, and this is not terrorism in general, we have all these elements, and we can cover all the acts of terrorism around the world. That's what I want to say. Actually, of course, it's even better to have one comprehensive uh, vision of that. But it's not, it's not there. That's fine. Uh, we can also work on, the, on that basis. But we don't work enough on the basis of these uh, international, uh, international instruments. We are always uh, uh, focusing on this uh, on this one overall definition, and we leave aside the 19 instruments on the basis of which all the countries of the world, have, uh, almost all of them, have decided to 
punish terrorists by, explo by, by explosives, the financing of terrorism, uh, the killing of uh, uh, diplomats, the uh, issue of the financing by uh, the terrorism uh, through the uh, in the airplanes, in the um, on the sea, etc., etc. Thanks very much. Uh, th thanks very much, Mr. Laborde, again, for another uh, very informative briefing, and, and good afternoon to all of you. Have a good afternoon. Day.